Hey guys, Ollie here from Local Knowledge. I've got my good buddy with me, Matt Moyer, who also happens to be the head chef at La Jolla Country Club here in San Diego. Pretty prestigious place. Matt tells me he can cook. I mean, we've been friends for like a decade now, but I haven't been able to get him to cook for me. Now's our chance. So what's the, what's the plan here, Matty? We're gonna break down this awesome bluefin that you caught a couple days ago. It's been on ice which is perfect because you want to firm the meat up. After it's all broken down, we're going to take it and I'm going to make about three easy dishes to make it super simple. Like, it's going to be awesome. Stuff you can make at home. You don't have to be a chef. To you do don't it. have to be a chef to do this. Part of the care process to make sure you get the absolutely best product, especially on these bigger fishes, is we like to get the guts out of them right away. Mm -hmm. You can see around the uh, donut here, we actually remove the butt area, and then we'll come in here and we'll detach the gills completely from the fish on both sides. The reason we like to take them out of the gill is yeah. you're not exposing any meat. Gotcha. So all the meat is still in its natural skin yeah. or in the membranes, there's less opportunity for bacteria or anything gotcha. bad to happen to yeah. the meat. Helps the fish cool down faster, we'll shoot the cavity full of cold water, and then we'll pack them full of ice. And it just, it, it renders a product you cannot beat. And if you're gonna kill these awesome animals, they deserve the, the respect to really treat them right and make sure you're getting the best table fare possible. When I cut a big fish like this, it's pretty standard, whether mm -hmm. it's a tuna, a giant tuna, a swordfish, whatever. The cuts you're gonna make all pretty much fall in line. I mean, you've got your spine right here, right? Which is the backbone of the fish. And that's what's gonna separate the two sides of the fish. I'm just gonna lift the pec fin and I wanna keep as much meat as I can. So I'm gonna cut all the way up into this mm -hmm. head area. And what I'll do with these bigger ones a lot of times is I'll just outline my cut right down that bloodline like we talked about. And at this cut, I'm just trying to really open the skin up. Yeah. I'm not trying to make a full cut, right? And then this tail meat gets pretty sinewy. So mm -hmm. as much as we don't want to waste fish, I'm going to come up here a little bit. You don't want this last back few inches. Yeah, so a lot, lot of muscle. That's where uh, that's where tissue. they work out. Yep. yep, that's the motor. And it's got to have all that connective tissue to make it work. Correct. So once I get through here, I'm just going to kind of come into here and basically complete my cuts. And you'll know when you've completed them because you just feel the bone, the plainest yeah. day, right? And now I want to feel his spine. I want to feel that on the knife just to make sure I'm not leaving a bunch of fish on the bone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So just be patient, kind of break this thing away. It's still going to hang up in a couple of places where there's extra Look skin. at that. But then- That's beautiful. Good once job. Once you get this loose. I mean, come on. I like to rough cut it first and get it into manageable chunks. So like, I'm gonna break this thing down into three or four pieces and I'm gonna make it super easy on myself. Dude, so there's your top loin. This is a little fish, <laughs> Dude, right? Look at that though. I mean, it's perfect. It's all the meat you could ever want for your family and friends. Man, I left a little on the skin there, but not bad. Yeah, it smells like the ocean. Uh, it just smells like sweet <laughs> and salty. Yeah, totally. So that's one side of the fish. Obviously rinse and repeat for the other side. Yeah. But that's how we break down a bluefin. We're just gonna take this stuff, portion it out and skin it. We, we already showed you how to do that. Let's break the other side of this guy down off camera real quick and then Perfect. we'll start doing the fun stuff. Great job. All righty. So what's the first dish you're gonna make for us tonight? So the first dish I'm gonna make tonight is a fried pokey. I worked at the Valley High as a sous chef. I don't know if you know that. I didn't know that. So you speak <laughs> yeah. pokey for sure. Yeah. So one of the things that I picked up there is I make fried rice really good and I make pokey really good. When you say fried pokey, you're not deep frying the fish. No, you're not deep frying it. It's just a real flash, like quick flash sear on it. And it's going to just be amazing. I can't wait to try it. No, and it'll break the mouth. I've had, I've had pokey like a thousand different yeah. ways. Like, let's see, let's try something different. Oh, you're going to be stoked. Sweet, sweet. Let's get busy. Awesome. So we got our green onions, we got our cilantro for garnish. Take me through it, dude, what's next? One of the things that really sets it off is a product that I use that I was introduced by one of my chef de cuisines, which is guchujang. Okay. It's basically a chili spice used in Korean cooking that gets its sweetness from cooked rice. We're gonna use just a, a regular mayonnaise because obviously nobody really wants to make mayonnaise from scratch. Yep. And so we're gonna make a little bit of gochujang aioli. So you're just gonna do yeah. a couple squirts of this? Yeah, so we're gonna you know, keep going, keep going, keep going. There you go. Yeah, perfect. Good. And the thing about this is, is it's all about flavor. This is a little bit spicy. Yep. So we're gonna add this to that. We're basically cutting the spice on this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you go ahead and, and uh, you can kind of show them it's red. 
so so you can kind of see it falling in yeah see how dark it is it's keep, chilly like deep dark yes chilly, right? yes tell me when keep going keep going you're good okay yeah. I do a lot of things by look and feel Same here. and taste. Four so, one, basically yeah. on this one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So give that a nice mix, yep. and then we're gonna chill that. We're gonna set that aside, and that's gonna be like the final little garnish. All right. So we got our cube tuna, a little bit bigger cube than normal for pokey, right? Correct. Like an inch by an inch, three quarter inch, something like that. Yeah. And the reason for that, Ali, is that if you cut it too small, when I hit it on the flash sear, if it's too small, it'll cook through. You don't and want to cook It's done. Through. Yeah. yeah. You're fishy. No, yeah. I, that, so you're just hitting it really quick. Really quick. A couple quick, of tosses really and, quick. and you're done, right? Yeah. Got it. And so what I'm doing with this is I'm actually going to throw the, all of this into a bowl. Okay. All right. Let's see where this is going. Yeah, yeah. Sesame oil. Yeah, a little bit of sesame oil. And the, and the thing is, this is just for flavors. Next, I like to use avocado oil. We're all about that here. Yeah. And this is just so that, you know, when we hit it on the on the quick sear, it doesn't stick. Got it. I like to throw a little bit of green onion in there. You smell that sesame oil and it's Asian food. Right? The minute you smell it, it's what it hundred percent. Yeah. We're going to do a little bit of kosher salt. So I like to give it a nice little feel, Ali. So I like to throw it in there and like like to see it. A lot of people will sit there and shake. You don't want to get it too salty because we're going to add a little bit of soy to this. Got it. So that little bit that I just put in there is yep. perfect. I'm going to do a little cracked black pepper in there. Whenever I cook something, I like to have a little bit of acid. So it's usually hot sauce. It's got a little bit, a little bit of spice to it. I'm going to shake it up. I'm just going to put a little bit in there just to give it a little bit of, a little bit of, uh, of that lemon, citrus, spicy. I also like a little bit of rice vinegar. Standard. And it's not a lot, not a lot, just a touch. And then a little bit of uh, furikake. Love it. It's awesome. It, dude, it is if like- If you do not have this, you gotta get it. It's what, bonita flake, sesame seeds, and nori. Yep. Chopped up, right? Yep. Sometimes it has rock salt in it too. A little bit of that. Furikake and togarashi. Two yeah. Two things everybody should have. And Ali, and then the last thing we do is a little bit of soy. And since we have a lot of salt in there, yep. I'm gonna go low sodium. Yep. It's almost like a pokey. It is. And then, then, close to then we're just to gonna go. mix it up. The one thing that we don't need to do is add more oil because the oil, everything's already on there. Plus you got a lot of fat in, the, in this tuna. So we're just gonna throw it really quick on there. And it's just like this. So you're just going really quick. You're turning it. and just putting a quick sear on it. Classic. You can smell the deliciousness. And this is all you're doing is just a quick sear on it. Okay, that smells so good. Man, that smells amazing. I would never have thought <laughs> to throw pokey on a grill. I'm not mad about it. No, no, it's not even done yet. Finish this out so we can eat some of it. All right, let's doing? finish this. I had uh, Ali run down to his local sushi place, got some masago, a little bit of eel sauce, right? Yep, shout out to Hannah Sushi. <laughs> Dude, they hooked you up. So we got a little bit of the eel sauce. I love eel sauce. There's your sweet. Here's the sweet. We're just gonna just dump a little bit of that on there. Right? Yes, sir. We got the Gucci chain. This is the aioli that you made. Yep, yep. And then you're just gonna put that in different spots. Oh, look at nothing crazy, yeah, nothing, nothing crazy. Just, you know, this stuff goes a long way. And then a uh, little masago. Makes everything better. Right? And you can never have enough masago. No, man, right? no. You got a little bit of tobiko. That to me is like ocean flavor. Right? Like it just, anything you're doing like this, you just take the next level. And then, you know, we put a little bit of green onion in there to, 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 to fry, it took the taste. We're gonna put a little bit of fresh on there. Okay. And then look at you. You wanna finish it off with your uh, little Actually, bit? Chef, go ahead. Chef Knucklehead. Oh my God, the tweezers not seen at all. <laughs> you're look right? How, look how fancy you are. Oh, you know, you gotta do it. But you know, this, this just sets it off. This is a dish that you can make for, for and they're gonna think that you're you're actually a chef. Yeah, football Sunday <laughs> stuff right here, Yeah, for sure. but I mean, 
Take a look at that. But Amazing. guess what? We're not done. I was going to say, what's your final act? A little bit of edamame. All right. And we're just using the, a little bit of the frozen stuff, the same stuff, dude. And we're just going to put a little bit of edamame on there. Boom. You want to try it? I'll I'm let you go first. Try it. You don't have any choice, buddy. <laughs> Get a little bit of everything. Yeah, uh, a yeah, lot of my I, dishes. I saw that yeah. Coming. yeah. Yeah. A little masago. So good. How bomb is that? So good. <laughs> Just putting that sear on it. Yeah. It changes everything. Dude. Legit. <laughs> you are terrible at fishing. <laughs> you are really good at cooking. No. Wow. A lot of my dishes are always about like getting the, the sweet, the spicy. You get a little bit of masago. Yep. Um, also, like sometimes, like you can even put something crunchy on there. Masaga are rare. Yep. Which is, you know, it's it's crunchy, but uh, oh, I like the textures. Good. Yeah. You can do some of that deep fried garlic on there. Mm -hmm. Deep fried oh. onion. Oh, dude. Shave the garlic. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. Just fry it up. You know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. That would that would kill it. It's so you do ten variations on this too. But I mean, you make that for anybody, and they're gonna be blown away. I'm blown away. Yep. I'm right with any of this stuff, like. <laughs> I'm gonna take a little bit of your way, a little mm -hmm. bit of what I like, and dude, you can't go wrong. That's it's what I love about it, and, th and that's what I always tell people about cooking is, is that cooking is something that you need to just like jump into and like start putting a lot of like what you like in it. My thing is, is like I like spicy, I like sweet, I like crunchy. Yep. You can't ever go wrong with those three things. No, sir. No, sir. Throw a little salt on that. Mm -hmm. A little bit of like that's the thing that oh. you see great chefs do, mm -hmm. right? Is they know how to balance the sweet, the fat, the spice, and the salt, yeah. and all that together, and that is, that's a home run. And, and it goes so great good. with beer, too. Yeah, well, a good thing for us, huh? <laughs> yeah, we right? a lot of beer to get at. Yeah, wonderful.